Is the following function a power function, a polynomial function, both, or neither? All right, so first thing is, what is a power and what is a polynomial function? So here's some notation to try to help us out, even though it looks confusing at the start. So um, power function, all right, we have some, what the heck happened? There we go, power function. So here we have some function, it will be equal to now some constant, all right, some numeric value, and it should be plus or minus. It can be either positive or negative. It's multiplied then by a variable, and then that's raised to some positive power, all right? And that also has to represent a, uh, or be a number. That's a power function, that's it. Now, polynomial function is you can kind of think about, we could have a power function in there, all right? Or actually, we kind of will, if you notice the format's very similar. I just put this case of one because you might have a single K, a single constant, or it might be now some other, you know, you might be adding to it then some other value with a different constant. You can think of then a polynomial function as like a series of added power functions, all right? Um, interestingly enough then, the polynomial doesn't necessarily need to be all powers. You could have a constant out there as well, okay? So you, you don't need it, but it could be there. A power function is very simple. It's just here it is, boom. If it doesn't match that, then it isn't a power function. A polynomial function, a little harder uh, to kind of identify because it can change a little bit. You can have... You can actually have a single term here, you could have two terms, you could have three terms, you can have any number of terms, and you can have a constant in there. Uh, but if you have a constant, you need to have something that looks like a power function in there as well. All right? Um, so, anyway, these k's, you know, that's still positive or negative, some coefficient, some number, that's a variable, and that's going to be some positive exponent, okay, represented by a value. Now, the goal is now to take a look at the function that's given and to figure out whether it is a power function or a polynomial function. In other words, can I take this and manipulate it in any way possible, you know, to make it match this form or this form, okay? And I'll, I'll leave the little C out there just to remind us that there can be a constant out there. Um, so uh, upon first glance, let's move this down, but upon first glance, the answer would be definitely be no, but you don't wanna just stop there. You really gotta think, can I algebraically manipulate this to try to match one of them? So why don't we start to kind of, you know, do some math here. So 2x, x plus 2. Why don't we just simply square this, right? So that's x minus 1 times an x minus 1. So we know x, right, we can do that math. So this is 2x, then this is x plus 2. All right, x, you know, when you do this, you have to FOIL it, right? So x minus 1 times an x minus 1. What? Okay, so first you do the first. So it's x times x, so that's x squared first times in the last, so that's negative 1x or just negative x. Then you take the second term in the first one, multiply it by the uh, second term, yeah, second second term in the first, multiply it by the first term in the second, right? So that's also a negative x. And the negative one times negative one or the second in the first and the second in the second. <laughs> Is it getting fun yet? That's gonna be a positive one. And then you can combine these terms, so that's gonna be x squared uh, minus 2x plus 1, okay? So that's what I'm going to now substitute in for this term. So that's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1, all right? Um, now what I need to do is kind of, you know, maybe do some more math. Why don't I FOIL, or not FOIL, excuse me, uh, distribute now this 2x to each term over there, right? So that's going to get me now 2x squared plus then 4x, okay? And this whole thing is then still multiplied by this whole thing, x squared minus 2x plus 1. All right. And now to, why don't I just kind of move this on over to the left-hand side, give us a little more space. Hopefully you're having a great semester if you're in college or a great year. You're probably into the year a little bit if you're studying this. Um, now what we're going to do is do the same thing. We're going to distribute, you know, we're kind of foil-ish. It's not called foil anymore. But we're going to take this term, multiply it by that, multiply it by that, and then multiply it by that. So it's going to be then these two, when you multiply it, that's going to be uh, 2x to the fourth. You add those exponents. Then when you take this and multiply it by the negative 2x, right, that's going to be negative 4x to the third. Then you're going to take this and multiply it by that on out there. So that's just going to be plus then 2x squared. Now we're going to do the second, right? Take the 4x, multiply it by each of those three terms. So it's going to be 4x times x squared, which would be simply 4x to the third. Then it's 4x times negative 2x. So that's going to be negative 8x squared. 
and then 4x times then the uh, 1, it's going to be just plus 4x. Now you can combine these, right, if you want to, so you don't really have to at the moment, but you can simplify this, right, so we can add and subtract, we have to have terms that have like bases, nothing is similar to this uh, x to the fourth, so I'm just going to leave that 2x to the fourth, but I do notice here that I have a negative, let me circle that, negative, you know, uh, 4x cubed, then I have a positive 4x cubed, so they're just going to go bye-bye, okay. Then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to look at, uh, let's say, my x squared. So I have a positive 2x squared. I have a negative 8x squared. So that's going to yield a negative 6x squared. Okay. And then I have just a term on there on out at the end, right? So plus 4x. Okay. And I'm pretty much good at this point. You know, I can factor out a common x, but you don't need to. At this point, we can. I think we can clearly see what's going on. All right. So if you take a, a look now. Uh, this first term has a k value here of a t of 2, it has a variable, and then it has a positive x, right? Oh, excuse me, a positive, sorry, power, what am I talking about? So that matches, you know, this in the polynomial. Uh, this one now is a negative 6, that, that's the coefficient there. It has a variable, then it has a power. So that matches, okay, that would be uh, another term. Remember that it could be added, whenever you have in this formula added, it could also be subtracted, right? That doesn't make a difference. And then you have another term on out here. That's the coefficient. That's the variable. Then it doesn't look like it has a superscript, you know, or an exponent there, but there is. It's a 1. So that does follow, again, the pattern for the polynomial. And the polynomial, like I was mentioning before, you can have any number of terms, one all the way, 1 all the way up until, you know, just less than infinity, whatever that number is, right? Actually, what's the number just less than infinity? Let me know in the comments. So... Here, this would be an example of a polynomial function, all right? Now, if I derived this basically from this, and I didn't make any mistakes, uh, which is possible, right? Everybody's human. But uh, that would then also mean that this is a polynomial function, okay? It's definitely not a power function because a power function only has one, you know, term here, basically. And this clearly has, you know, three. So uh, it's a polynomial function. Guys, thanks for tuning in. I really do hope that helped. If you can, like, subscribe, maybe even tell some of your classmates. It helps us out tremendously, okay? We appreciate it, and I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.